Hello, welcome to the highlights of the fourth day's play of this fourth test match between Australia and the West Indies. It's been a thriller so far and we're in for a very good day today with the Australians needing 186 to win. The West Indians in turn need 10 wickets. These are the cards of the match so far. The West Indies 252 with Lara 52 as top score and 49 for Junior Murray who did very well. And then the Australians in reply, they were 39 short of the West Indian total. 39 not out to David Boone, Merv Hughes 43 and Steve Waugh 42. Good effort from Merv Hughes there, coming in at the bottom of the order. And the West Indies in an astonishing batting performance yesterday, bowled out for 146, equally astonishing the Australian bowling, I guess. It was a terrific performance from them. 72 Richie Richardson before Shane Warne deceived him, brought him down the track and had him both caught and then stumped by Ian Healy, 25 to Carl Hooper, but the rest is integrated, seven for 68, they lost after T. 146, and that left Australia with 186 needed for victory. They began their innings this morning in good conditions. We join play now in the second over of the day. It's none for one. Ian Bishop is the bowler bowling to Mark Taylor in quite good conditions, although there's a thunderstorm forecast for later in the day. And your commentators are Tony Gregg and Michael Whitney. Up the mark, and we come back for the second. Yes, he will. So, two runs from that over. Australia, no wicket for three. Oh, that's a big appeal for LBW, and it must have been quite close. Perhaps it pitched outside the leg stump. You've seen him move it away mainly. Yes, I agree, Tony. You are not allowed to wear advertising on your wristbands. So Reebok are getting a bit of a free plug, mate, on those wristbands. Well, that's got to be out. Yes, he's got him. LBW, it's nipped back. He's played from the crease. The question is, did he get outside the line? Boone purposely trying to get across there in order to counteract that one that nips back. But Ambrose has struck. What a wicket this is. Right, Mike, talk us through it. Did he get outside the line? Well, that was the ball that we talked about earlier that David Boone has to watch. Ball angling in and not moving, not coming forward. That looked a very, very good shout to me. And when the batsman doesn't come forward, it always looks a little bit ugly. David Boone stranded on the crease and the ball, the decision going in the favour of Kirtley Ambrose. David Boone departs for a duck. Unfortunate start for Australia. One for five. Well, Justin Langer, the new batsman, and what a huge occasion this has been for him. Apart from the fact that it's his first test match, he was smashed on the head in the first innings. Well, one thing about this Adelaide pitch, it has always been consistent in bounce. Yeah. And that's gone. That was a loud nick. Benjamin goes through, takes the wicket. And Mark Taylor has gone for seven, two for 16 now, Australia. Needing it all, 186 for victory. What a breakthrough for the West Indies. Yes, the West Indian fast bowlers have been aiming at that line to Mark Taylor. Pitching in line with the stumps and going across his body. A very, very good delivery that from Kenneth Benjamin. Mark Taylor departs. He made seven. Australia are now two for 16. Mark War is the new batsman. It was the end of the over, so it'll be Kirtley Ambrose now to bowl to Justin Langer. In the air, past Desmond Haynes, it could go all the way. Kirtley, Courtney Walsh chasing hard as four. That was past Desmond Haynes very quickly, he threw out a hand. Gets him as a five, it's four, and right? then he decides to open the shoulder as the second boundary of the morning. Big shout, got the close. Very confident appeal. It's two for 36. It's a great shot, superb square drive. The cut is right over the top of that shortest delivery. Was always going to be four. Ambrose has taken six wickets. There he goes, he's real way. This time it goes over the top. It's four more. 
10 off the over. That's very close. Empire Len King decides that it's not close enough. Kenneth Benjamin has been working away at those stumps looking for the LBW decision. He's got one that's been very close on this occasion. Len King had to consider, did it pitch outside the leg stump? Was it going to hit the stumps? Was it going to bounce over the stumps? And as far as we could see from here, it looked very much as though all the conditions were right. Carl Hooper has taken another very good catch. Courtney Walsh, who's been a great bowler for the West Indies over a long period of time, is a very happy man, as are all of his teammates. Mark Waugh is the danger man and was the danger man for Australia. He can't believe it. It's lucky Carl Hooper concentrates better in the field than he does always with the bat. He's caught some very good catches at second slip there and diving across again in front of Brian Lara at first slip makes no mistake. It's another useful wicket for Courtney Walsh and the West Indies. Australia 3 for 54. Steve Waugh comes in to replace his brother Mark Waugh. 48 tests. 177 is higher score, an average of 37, very similar to Mark. 2,308 runs, whereas Mark has just gone over the 1,000 run mark. Steve Waugh, the man in the hot seat, has batted number three for most of the summer. Batting at five on this occasion. That's a good delivery from Courtney Walsh, a real blind at a cop first up. Steve Waugh has done well to survive it. Steve Waugh is happy to be on the way. Just the length of finding the gap. Seven runs from the over, three for 61. It's a little bit uh, dark, certainly a lot uh, darker than it was before the players went off for lunch. Steve Waugh on strike. Get down. Shout of catch it. Oh, and Keith Arthurton at the second grab. Oh, it was straight to him and Dolly. And I'm not sure whether it bounced out of his hands or whether it bounced off his chest. But uh, he had a quick lunge at it. And in fact, he was a bit lucky on the second grab because he, he really grabbed quickly at it and it could have easily got away from him. Well, that's a big blow for the Australian Steve Waugh looking to force the first ball off the back foot and geez, he was very very lucky to grab that on the second bounce it's an absolutely crucial blow for the Australian cricket team Steve Waugh out for four Australia four for 64. Alan Border well this wouldn't have been what he wanted second ball after lunch he'll be facing No ball was called. I don't know what it came off, but it went straight through Carl Hooper's hands. And uh, leg by signaled. It's, I don't know whether that hit the helmet. Certainly hit some part of uh, Alan Border's body. Yes, he's got that off the side of the head, Alan Border. Once again, thank you for the protective helmets. Border in trouble. And they've missed the stumps. Oh, he was stranded halfway down the track. It's four for 72. Seems the bounce is becoming a little bit more uneven on this wicket as, as the game has gone on. Obviously, the wicket dries out a little bit and loses its bounce and carry. The odd one's still carrying through, but that one, in fact, going on the first bounce to wicket keeper Junior Murray. Shouts of catch it. Desmond Haynes has done it. Border walks. He doesn't even wait for the decision. And 
just as Michael was saying that the bounce uh, is uneven, we get a good example of that. The previous delivery bounced in front of the keeper. And that one absolutely took off. Well, that's a brute of a ball from Ambrose. Banged in short. Perfect bouncer right at the throat. And Alan Border couldn't do too much except try and get his batting gloves in the way. It's a vital blow for the Australian team and the West Indies. Australia now five for 72. Ian Healy with an average of 22. Australians could use every one of those at the moment. Got a duck in the first innings. Plenty riding on the young man now playing in his first test. Justin Langer there at 24. He's lost his skipper. And it's gone onto the stumps. A pair for Ian Healy, and that is uh, a terrific wicket for the West Indies because Healy plays so well in pressure situations for Australia. And that's a thousand first class wickets for Courtney Walsh. Maybe Ian Healy expecting the ball pitched up, got an inside edge. It's just clipped the stumps there. We can see the bales hitting the ground in the background. And Courtney Walsh is ecstatic, as are all his West Indian teammates. And Australia now looking to be in deep trouble. Australia, six for 73. Merv Hughes top scored for Australia in the first innings with 43. He's going to have to do another uh, resurrection job here on the Australian innings. It was six for 112 when he came in in the first dig. It's much worse this time at six for 73. Three wickets have fallen since lunch. Steve wore out first ball after lunch. Score of 64, Border out at 72, and Healy out at 73. So that's two pairs we've seen now in this game. Keith Arthurton getting a pair and Ian Healy getting a pair. That was a catch, except that it was a no ball. Trouble at the bowler's end. It was a no ball. They didn't really need to take the single. It was an inside edge on the pad to Desmond Haynes. I don't think you could have had many more things happen on that ball. Well, it's all happening here. There's more twists and turns than an Agatha Christie novel this over. And that was a catch. Desi Haynes just losing it, and then they try to head off for the quick single, and if Haynes hits the stumps, Merv Hughes is long gone out of his out of his ground. He's well out. Big shout then he's been given. Merv Hughes going a long way across, and Kirtley Ambrose has got 10 for the match. Pretty good performance by Ambrose. His figures stand at the moment at 4 for 11. Pitching up to Merv Hughes. And that's, uh, that's pretty plum, so the cricketers say. Wouldn't be too much uh, to be thinking about that. Merv Hughes departs for one LBW bold Ambrose. Australia reeling at 7 for 74. With Shane Warne coming to the crease. And boy, can't the uh, West Indies batsmen thank their bowlers if they get out of this. In the commentary position now, Greg Chappell and Richie Benno. Days of the test match, there have been interruptions with rain, bad light, plenty of wickets, some good batting. The Australians are going to need some good batting from here. Merv Hughes was the last man out. Full delivery from Kirtley Ambrose, Merv just shuffling across. Len King has no hesitation in putting the finger up. Roar goes up around the ground. It's only a single. Looked as though it was pitching outside leg stump. Justin Langer just giving a shake of the head there. I think he was a little bit disappointed with himself for missing a delivery pitching around leg stump. 
Just outside leg stump, would have hit the stumps. It'd be a good effort if they can win this test match, square the series. Well, that's not going to do any good. The umpire here is not doing anything about it. Warren is standing there. Everyone else has their hands on their hips and folded and shouting and yelling down the far end. Ambrose has rushed in to congratulate Walsh anyway. This has come off Shane Warne's chest, I believe. Or the forearm, actually. Got the hands down, got the bat out of the way. If it had hit him on the glove, he would have been out. It's hit him halfway up the forearm towards the elbow. That is definitely not out. And a close look at this. Just hits him up the forearm. Through to second slip, Carl Hooper. That is definitely not out. And a very good decision by umpire Daryl Hare. Didn't quite time that. He's going to get three for it. Quite got it off the middle of the bat, but it was a pretty good stroke. Well, it's a quick single. This could be close. Says he has a go at the wrong end. Well, I think Langer probably would have been safe, and uh, he was probably correct to have a go at Warren's end, but he was perhaps just a little bit deep there. Oh, and that was a good bouncer. Fantastic delivery. It stayed a little lower than. Langer expected, but they uh, ended up playing it pretty well. But if everyone did, he was always getting outside the line, going to the leg side. But it was uh, a very good one because it was right over the stumps, the, the, the dangerous ones. That's guided through the gap. It's going to be a chase for Desmond Haynes. It's going to be three runs for Langer. It'll bring the 100 up for Australia. At least that's a reasonable landmark for them. Having said that, that target of 186 still looks quite some distance away. Got him. Shane Warne is gone. Ian Bishop has struck for the West Indies. It's been over 70 minutes these two have been together. But finally, Shane Warne shuffles in front of his stumps. He's beaten for pace by Ian Bishop. And the eighth wicket has fallen. That's certainly a very good wicket for the West Indies. These two had been holding up the proceedings for quite some time, doing very well. But Shane Warne just playing across the line of that one. Ian Bishop is delighted. The eighth wicket goes down for Australia. Shane Warne. Goes for nine, Australia now eight for 102. It's Tim May's birthday today. It's not quite the situation that he would have liked to have been in at the start of the day. Very much at the moment, it looks as though if anyone's going to be cracking champagne this evening, it's more likely to be the West Indies. That's a good catch. Phil Simmons holds the ball up. Len King can't see. Ian Bishop got on the way, got in the way as the ball went to Phil Simmons. But Phil Simmons eventually admitting that he doesn't think he's caught it, it was a good effort. This ball went very low to Phil Simmons, bounces just in front then. That's a nasty ball. Ian Bishop looking for the catch. It's come off Tim May's shoulder. We'll be able to have another look soon enough. Tim May completely resolute. He's staying there, whatever happens. That's going to be runs. That's the best answer there. It's going to be four runs for Tim May. Hits it very sweetly through the offside. It's a situation. 74 with two wicks in hand. Not impossible, but very difficult. 
That's a big hit. That's going high and wide. That's four. I'm surprised he's using Carl Hooker, maybe trying to get Tim May, because he's been shackled as that brings up the 50 for Justin Langer. And what a beauty. Very good 50 for Justin Langer. Applause from his teammates in the Australian dressing room and a standing ovation from certain areas of the crowd. It's been a real gutsy effort. She has a lot of heart, a lot of determination. 50 runs, just four boundaries in that. It's been there a long time, 223 minutes. No, he hits that for four, glorious shot. So the start, side of the and shots up. I'll tell you, a good idea too. And they rattled the West Indian bowlers. It was a superb strike. Oh. Missed at an edge. That's going for runs. That'll go for four. So two balls in a row concede six runs. Half chances go begging. Eight for 132. May is a back foot player. Maybe a fraction better to be up for. That's four more. Away she goes. The crowd run slowing up. They should run four. And it goes all the way in front of the members. And they're loving it. Out! He's gone. What a tragedy. Went for the pull shot. Got an edge and it went through to the wicketkeeper who held it. And Bishop strikes what possibly is a winning blow for the West Indies at the end of a great innings on debut from Justin Langer. Fantastic knock by Justin Langer. Sad way to see him out at such a crucial time. Going for the pull shot, got an under edge. Carries through to Ricky Cooper Jr. Murray and Ian Bishop. The West Indies elated. But a standing ovation from the Adelaide crowd. Very, very good innings and innings of courage and determination. His first 50 in Test cricket on debut. The Australians in deep trouble now. Justin Langer out for 54. Australians in deep trouble at nine for 144. As Craig McDermott makes his way to the wicket, excited because Australia, I guess, have got a swim chance now of winning this match. What? Walsh has not been used since T. So available. Big shout. Not out. Nine for one for eight. Yeah. And beats mid off. Kirtley Ambrose. McDermott's looking for three. And gets them. It's well run. It's nine for 162. in the air but Desmond Haynes is too far back and the misfield brings another run. Nine for 177. Yes. It's a driven shot, there'll be at least three here. Kenneth Benjamin hobbling along after the ball. He'll just get it. Three runs to Tim May. Six runs required for Australia. And the tension is really rising here. Driven it, it's in the air, Richie Richardson dives, he can't get to it, and Australia survive. Short one again, it's in the air, but Desmond Haynes is in the wrong position. Will they go back for the tying run? No, they don't. 184, one run away from the tie. Oh, he's tried to avoid it, it's hit the bat, then he's gone, and the test match has been won by one run. I can't believe it. The West Indians are delighted. Craig McDermott is so disappointed. It's been a magnificent effort by both sides here today. Courtney Walsh is absolutely delighted. The Australian dressing room will be decimated, but you can bet the West Indian dressing room will be absolutely jumping. What a sensational finish and what a sensational day of Test Match cricket. 184 Australia all out. The only one-run victory in the history of Test Match cricket. Tim May unbeaten on 42. 54 for Justin Langer, a great performance from him. Disappointment for others. Tim May played very well and Craig McDermott also. 
184. And the West Indian bowling figures, heroes there, Ambrose and Courtney Walsh, as has been the case on other occasions for them. Four for 46 from 26 overs, Ambrose. Three for 44 for Walsh, a wicket for Benjamin and two for Bishop. Now here's Tony Gregg in the presentation area. He's with the two skippers, very excited skippers, and with the player of the match. Thank you, Richie. Well, uh, I've got Richie Richardson down here with Alan Border and the man of the match. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank you. And uh, <coughs> I suspect that that was a bit tense for you out there. Well, yeah, but I, I knew all along that we would win this test match. Um, when the match started, everybody was saying Adelaide is usually a um, uh, batting wicket and, you know, a big first innings uh, total would probably do the trick. But I said um, uh, you could do the trick by um, getting low, low totals on this ground. Um, I think... Um, the bowling was uh, tremendous on both sides and uh, there was a little bit of bad batting. But I don't think anything is wrong with the wicket whatsoever. Right, so it's one all now and off to Perth. Looking forward well, to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're looking forward to uh, winning in Perth. And the guys are, are playing very well. We've still got some improving to do. And uh, we feel very confident that we'll win. Right, well, congratulations, Dan. A close one. Thank you. Well done, Richard. Well, Alan Board has uh, been good enough to come in as well. Bad luck. That's the, that's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else to say. Um, we were gone for all money until the last couple of blokes went in and, the, you know, full credit to them, they, they stuck to their guns. Uh, young Justin Langer held it together very, very well. And then, you know, right at the end there, I thought we were going to snatch it. So, um, you know, just a tremendous test match all round. Obviously very disappointed with the result, but um, hopefully we get a big crowd in Perth. Well, it's one all. You can still win the series. Looking forward oh, yeah. to Perth. Definitely. I mean, uh, you know, we didn't lose any ground, I don't think, out of this game. And, uh, you know, we've just got to regroup now and uh, five good days in Perth. Right. Well, have a couple of good days rest and look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thanks, Tony. Right. Well, now we've got the Man of the Match Award. We've got $1,000 here and this is Baccarat Crystal Oblisk as well. And uh, Kirtley Ambrose has taken that out. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There's the money. Right. Well, that's 10 wickets in, in, a, in a row. Twi well, not 10 wickets in a row. That's your second time for 10 wickets, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I haven't had a great deal of luck this summer, you know, but I know that if I keep fighting, uh, my luck will change. Actually, it did this game. You know, we came out winners, even though it was kind of close, but I'm quite happy the way I'm going. Right, well, that's all from down here. Rich, back to you. Thanks, Tony. A nice presentation and a very exciting day's cricket here. And coming up in Perth, the next Test match starting on Saturday, January the 30th, and going through to February the 3rd, Australia West Indies, the decider, and red tickets have plenty of tickets. It'll be a big crowd there and a tremendous audience once again for the moment from the Adelaide Oval after an historic day. It's goodbye. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.